So I'm just wrapping up a brake install. What I did was um, new drums, new shoes, and uh, some of the inner components I replaced also, and then repacked the bearings, got everything back together. This being a four-wheel drive, a bit more complex and uh, a little bit more to do than your conventional uh, like rear end with drum brakes on it or even front end. Um, in part one though, what I did was got the truck running, you know, got all the mechanicals done on the engine. We did water pump, carburetor, a basic tune-up with a distributor and cap and rotor, plugs, wires, got into the radiator with a new one. Really got everything fine-tuned to get this truck running. So that's why now in part two, I'm down here and I wanna make the truck safe to drive. The brakes weren't working at all. So that's why I'm starting with the brakes and then I'm ahead into the shock. So behind me are a bunch of parts from Duralast and I went on uh, AutoZone Pro, placed an order, they delivered them to the shop. And uh, it's all the brakes and shocks, everything we're gonna need to get this thing safe underneath. And you know, one good thing I did notice about these brakes and how they uh, installed, it, it was flawless. Everything went on as should. Definitely the, the, the fitment was there, the quality was there, and I'm sure the performance will be there when we take this thing out. So everything was definitely OE or better. With that being said, it's time to get over to the driver's side and knock it out. All righty, so here we get down on the driver's side. Um, this being four wheel drive, there's a lot more involved just to get the drum off. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through that. First thing we gotta do, this has got a manual locker, so we're gonna take that apart first. I like to put stuff down as I take it off in order. Um, that way you don't think as much as you're doing the rest of the stuff. So to take this off, there's a snap ring and then a spring clamp in there. So we're gonna get those off first. Okay, next step, we're gonna pull this unit out. All right, need a little persuasion. There we go. What's going on? Okay. There we go. All right. There's that and pull the spring out. Now that we got all that out of there, I'm gonna show you how, what our next step is. So this, you need to actually get a tool. You can get this at AutoZone, but th there's gonna be two nuts in here. One locks the other one in place. There we go. The next step is, there's a little locking washer that's in there, and this kind of can be the hardest part of this. I'm sure there's a special tool for it. I don't work on very many four by fours, so I don't have that special tool. All right, there it is. And then we got one more nut in there. Same tool. Pull this nut out. Okay, be careful because there is a seal and a bearing in here. Don't let that fall on you. So here's the seal. There's the bearing, what we'll do. These bearings are in really good shape. We're gonna go ahead and just repack them and reinstall them. All right, so we got ourselves a little spring cleaning to do before we get too crazy. We're gonna start right here. And uh, as you can see, this thing's been sitting for quite some time. Get all this loose stuff out of here. Now that loose stuff's done, we'll come in and come in here. Spray her with some brake clean, get it all. All right. All right, guys. Yes, I know there's a tool for this and I can't find it. So, oh, where I put it last time. So I'll have to do it the old fashioned way. Still works. There we go. I'm not going to use any of that stuff again. All right, we'll knock the wheel cylinder out. Don't lose this, you're going to need it. These brake lines can be a little difficult to get to, so what I'm going to do is pull this bracket off, get some things out of the way, and then I can get in there and break it loose. Everything is really rusty on here, so I've kind of put some uh, penetrating oil on there. Hopefully that helps me. So this line's had better days, it just broke. So we'll make another line. This truck was found out in the desert and it looks like some of it is living inside of here.
Let's start by installing our new wheel cylinders. Go. Tighten them bad boys up. I'll have to make a new line. Remember, I gotta make a new line because the other one broke. But we'll address that later. I'm gonna put a little bit of bearing grease on these. Slide them into the wheel cylinders. All right, now we can put the shoes on. Getting ready to put the brake shoes on. There's a primary brake shoe and a secondary. The primary is the one with actually the smaller lining. It goes in the front, bigger one goes in the rear. There's that one. Here's the adjuster. I like to put a little bit of grease on that too. Be sure you get the right side for what you're working on because one is reverse thread, the other one is a right hand thread. And look right here, there's a little slot here. That slot is so you can get in there and manually adjust this. So make sure you put that in the correct way or you'll never adjust it. And you'll take the whole front end apart and trust me, you don't want it on this type of truck. Just that. I don't do a whole lot of drum brakes. So I just wanna make sure everything's looking good. Next up, we're gonna put the retainer on there which holds the shoes on there. The little bracket we put in and then gets locked down here. You gotta pull the spring back and then lock in the hook like that. Slide that through like that and then just pull it on. This makes this a little easier. There's one, just like that. All right, so we're gonna suppress the studs out enough to get beyond the drum. So what I'm gonna do now so I'm going to go ahead and press these studs back into the hub and you can feel when it gets a bunch of resistance on it. Easy as that. These have a little knurl on them. We're going to just slightly press those through this hub here. What I'm going to do is just take the, some lug nuts, pull that through. That's it. All right, so I just repacked a bearing. Bearings look pretty good, put a new seal on there. Go ahead and start reinstalling. And see, right now we got a ton of play in between the drum and the shoes. So let's go ahead and just start manually cranking that out. It's a lot easier to do it here than with the tool when everything's together. Yeah, you can just hear it dragging right there. It's a perfect spot, so I like that. All right, so that one's all repacked. We'll go ahead and install it. Don't forget the seal. There you go, and that's gonna go way in there. I need to take a brief intermission, clean my hands, finish the installation. Well, that took a while, so might as well put a pair of gloves on. Use your tool, and get that thing started a little easier. Get our locking washer, and it goes just like that and push that all the way up against the other nut and then get your locking nut on there. Now you gotta lock, there's two sets of gears here, here or splines, here and here. Gotta make sure those all line up. There we go. And there it is. All right, let's get this all back together now. Get our spring in there. Now our locker. And there's two sets of splines the axle and then the outer hub splines. There we go. First the retaining clip. All right, so that's all in there. Let me just see if I get this axle's out all the way. There we go. Now our snap ring. Just make sure those things are in, which they are. All right. Now we'll go ahead and put the final assembly on and adjust the brakes and move to the rear. So I've already got the passenger side uh, brakes all wrapped up. Now it's time to get on the driver's side. So I've got to free up this drum a little. Sometimes just shocking it. Actually, that was pretty good. The good thing is, is I found my brake tool that I was looking for yesterday. So it'll make getting these springs off much easier. Just turn and then pop it off. Same on that one. Pop that off. 
We're not gonna reuse any of the stuff on this side. This stuff is way worse off than the front was. The front we were okay with the springs. We'll go ahead and replace all that. Save this. These shoes off here. There we go. This side has the e-brake, parking brake, whatever you wanna call it, hooked to the shoe. So you'll have to remove that. Save this. We're gonna reuse it, not the spring though. Go ahead and save that. And then this clip, I gotta get this clip. There we go. Pull that off, dump it. We're gonna put a new wheel cylinder on here too. So I'll go ahead and break the wheel cylinder loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the trash can over here, lower this down a little to kind of keep that brake dust from, you know, try to contain it in the trash can as much as possible. That way it doesn't get all over the shop. Okay, I guess we're gonna get going. Let me go get the shoes. Cause I'm wearing boots. Brand new pair of shoes right here. It's a tool, it just makes it a little harder to see where you're going. There we go. Now to the secondary. Shoe, make sure you put your e-brake lever on there. There's your clip. There you go. Don't forget your wheel cylinder. So I'm gonna put a little grease on these. Slide them into the wheel cylinder. One on each side. Now we can put the wheel cylinder in. There you go, just like so. There we go. All right, get this little retainer in there. It holds the shoes up there like so. Spring holds it in place. Got to get that on here. And then get that spring on there. Watch your fingers. That might hurt. There's one. This one's a little tighter of a spring. But make sure, if you have this tool, it makes life a lot easier to do. Like that. There we go. Okay, now one more spring. Spring goes like that. This one you're gonna have to use like, I just use these little vice grips. Like so. There we go, maybe that'll work. And then you're just gonna slide that cable over, let the spring go. Now everything's in place. And you'll hear this clicking when you adjust. That's what you want to hear. All right. Okay, so there we go. So to adjust it, we're gonna go on the back side, on the backing plate, and there's a little slot back here. There we go, that's a good start. Out with the old, in with the new. Awesome sauce. One side down, three to go. Steering stabilizer, this one's had better days. So, go ahead and replace that real quick. That one I got off, no problem. I mean, what is that? They don't only just carry Duralast parts, but they carry a huge variety of other brands, like this Rancho steering stabilizer we're gonna install. All right. Looks good.
Cool. Well, last thing for us to do now that the brakes are on the car is change out the master cylinder and booster. As you can see, it's pretty rusted up. Um, I already checked inside and it's dry. So let's take that all apart and uh, we'll get the new stuff in. All right. For now, let's pull. Well, I got to go inside the truck and uh, undo the linkage going to the pedal. So we got the new booster, comes with hardware. We're gonna install this. Then I'm gonna bring you over to the bench bleeder station and bench bleed the master out, throw that on there. Then we're gonna bleed the brakes and hopefully I can put the wheels and tires on um, once I put coolant in, get out of here. So it's time to install our wheels and tires. The wheels are US mag Indies. They're more of a retro look, 15 by eights. The tires are Falcon Wild Peaks AT3Ws. And we went with a 31 by 1050. Well, here we are. You know, a few days of work, a bunch of parts from Duralast, and we're on the road, you know? It's moving under its own power. It's steering and stopping as it should. Um, all the parts went on as directed. I mean, we still have a ton of work to do on this truck, but it's motivating knowing that it's on the road again and uh, driving. 